20 years ago, like when Michigan State was playing George Mason, the line on that game like went from three to four to five to six, up, 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 and the public was moving lines. This whole idea of fading the public and you're going to win and the public moving lines, I don't think the public moves lines anymore. This is Sharp Money with Patrick Maher on VSIN, the sports betting network. Hanging out with our good buddy, professional better Steve Fezzik, pregame.com, at Fezzik Sports on Twitter. Before we get into your takeaways from the weekend, what is a, a professional better's Saturday and Sunday like during the college tournament? Were you at home just constantly in gaming, or you, were you running around town? Yeah, so I'm at home constantly in gaming. The one exception is that before the game started on Sunday, because it was such a uh, a late schedule. I went ahead and shot out first thing in the morning, made a few bets at a couple of the local books that were out there, and then uh, came came back once the game started and was live wagering all day. But I got to be honest, it has been very disappointing, the tournament, and part of the disappointment has been, uh, I'm going to do a State of the Union um, address in terms of professional sports bettors and wanting to bet big on sports. If you're a stone cold sucker, you can bet whatever you want. But if you're a sharp better, it is getting harder and harder and harder. I, specifically, like I looked at what I remember playing like over at the win and betting like $1,000 a pop during the Michigan State, um, I think it was Michigan State Kentucky title game um, like 10, 15 years ago, maybe against Florida. And now, like even like Circa, like they're dealing minus 115 in each direction. I've spoken to them about it. And the limits are like, on the totals are like a nickel. And on the sides, it might be a dime or two dimes on, on the games. But um, just the mere fact that they've had to go into minus 115 pricing in each direction, it is not easy to win as a um, serious sports better anymore. Well, let's follow up on that. You mentioned in your notes, the college of the VEASAN College Basketball Invitational shows how hard it is to win at minus 110. Said, yeah. Yet, sports betting is in shambles. Almost no books welcome sharp action. So for a person that makes his living doing this, what's the recourse? What are we going to do here? What's the plan? Uh, that's a good question. So you expand. You bet more games of the year. You bet more openers. You bet more season wins. You play more contests. Contests are great. You know, I got to go back to like 20 years ago. I told people about what an um, amazing ROI contest had. And like upwards of 300%. I think I quoted 200%. They said, you're smoking crack, Fez. You know, it's like there's no way. Um, but you're just playing against the public. And so playing against the public in, in ex- betting exchanges is probably good as well. Trying to limit that vig and no longer laying minus a dollar ten. But think about how the world has changed. I'm just going to throw out a few um, points to make my to make my point. Like 20 years ago, there was a contest at the old Riviera, and it was called the Beat Boston Contest, college basketball overnights. Allen Boston went up against Brent Crow, and they both hit, like, high 50s percents. And I think, yeah, Brent Crow did win. But uh, just picking off soft numbers, and both both gentlemen won on their selections. Um, I had a similar contest, Beat Bogdanovich. I went up against Nick Bogdanovich. He and I famously both hit, you know, 60% plus in our contest. This is like 20 years ago again. Basically, most people in these sort of contests really did well. So now this past year in college football, I didn't participate last year, but the year before, I participated in the VEASAN college football contest sub 500. I was below 500. And you look at how the college basketball participants have done, and they've done, they haven't done mediocre. They've done poorly. They're below 500. And if you bet $100 on every selection, you're down over like $5,700. Does that mean the participants being chosen are bad? No. A lot of these guys are very sharp. But guess what? It's a different world. It's not 1998 or 2007 anymore. It is so rare that a line is just off, and it just stays off for a long period of time. So all these guys out there, they might win. They probably do win in their own selections, and the big reason is that, I'll use an example, Georgia and the NIT is playing Wake Forest yesterday. Well, Wake Forest's best player um, is, is ruled out, and word doesn't get out at first, and Georgia's catching nine and a half, and then Georgia ultimately closes seven. So... Either way, Georgia wins outright, but Georgia plus nine, nine and a half, great bet. Plus seven, dicey. And there's so many bets like that where getting at the best of the number is so important in your wagering. And even in first halves and the like, you look at Houston against Texas A&M. Yeah, Texas A&M, absolutely stone cold the right side for the game in the first half. 
But if you bet the market number first half, you lost. Plus four and a half goes down because they lose by five for the first half. You just got to get the best of the number and get rogue numbers and lay less than minus 110 if you're going to be serious about winning real money. Let's continue with the State of the Union theme. As a professional better, if Mr. Bogdanovich, Mr. Benson were to ask for your counsel, ask for your advice, what would you tell them? Wow. Well, Nick doesn't need my advice because he's, um, you know, super sharp and I'm sure he's finding his own advantages, you know, to go ahead and, and specialize. I think he would be specializing in one sport and working with others, people that specialize in other sports. You know, I've gone back and forth with Jeff, extremely sharp guy. And I would say circuit does it perfectly because here's why it Circa is not a standalone sports book. They don't need to win gobs of money with their sports book. They just need to make enough to cover their expenses roughly because it brings so much more business into that fine resort and people want to go to Stadium Swim and they're getting the $400 bottle service. They're going to Berries, gourmet dinners and the like. Time of their life, um, they're doing everything right to bring in business so they can use the sports book not as a loss leader but as a break-even sort of situation and that really gives them an advantage over um, another property that absolutely has to turn a profit from their sports book. What would be a perfect world scenario for you as a professional better, though? Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned some books right now offering five. What would be, for you, something that could help? You know, we were just talking about how hard it is to win because the numbers are so sharp. Is there anything you would recommend to help the better? Yeah, betting exchanges. So I was looking at opening day MLBs coming, and it's not unusual out there that, like, the favorites minus 250 and the underdogs plus 210. And the, the cockroach bookies will give you this the, the song and dance about how the house theoretical hold. The Theo is no different from, like, a minus 105 pricing or close to it on a pick'em game. But no one wins. And, and think about it. Here's why no one wins. When you have a minus 250 plus 210 straddle, Let's say the correct number should be minus 212 plus 212, no big number. Or the correct number should be minus 245 plus 245. Well, there's a huge difference between 212 and 245, and yet either number is, un- if that's the correct number, is unbettable into a minus 250 plus 210 straddle. So where I'm going is betting exchanges. Um, Profit New Jersey has this. Vegas desperately needs a book. It's not going to work on prop betting. It's not going to work on college basketball totals. There won't be enough volume. But for the pro sports, the major sports, NBA, MLB, NFL, having a betting exchange where you've got basically minus 101 pricing in each direction and a 1% commission is the future. How soon are we going to get there? Everywhere? I don't know, but it's coming. Maybe not 101, but over at the South Point in person, I think you can get a dollar five on NCAA tournament numbers. Yeah, accolades for the South Point. So here's a loss leader, and this goes back to you know the Gone family knowing they don't need to make money on everything because the South Point, you walk through a lot of the casinos, you shoot a cannon, you're not going to hit nothing most days because it's just empty with their, their, their three greens on the roulette wheels and their easy bust even money on blackjack when they're paying six to five. They're just ripping people off left and right, and guess what? People are going to go, Benny Binion said it right, give people a good gamble, good food, and they'll keep coming back, and that's what South Point does. Does with their you know really good odds on video poker, really good blackjack rules, dollar fifty hot dogs, you know across the board, great buffet, and here it is again. Not only are they dealing minus one hundred five, but they're not dealing minus um, one hundred five pricing where they can make one side minus one hundred nine, the other side minus one hundred one. My understanding is they make it minus one hundred five in each direction, which is I won't go into all the details. Very, um, it's great for the better. And why? Let's assume you hit fifty. 3% against the spread, all right? So you're a fine handicapper. If you're playing against minus 110, you're, 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 you're frying hamburgers at best for a living. Your ROI is like 1%. So you, got, you bet $1,000, you make 10 crummy dollars. You may as well be working at McDonald's. But now, all of a sudden, you're styling. You're working at McDonald's, I guess, on, under that Congressman Lee's suggestion to pay fast food workers, you know, $50 an hour. Because now you're making 3% ROI when you're laying minus 105 as a 53% handicapper. And, and get this, Patrick, if you're a 52% better, you are losing minus 110. Now you're winning laying 105. Well, maybe you could go to Bobby Valentine and get that fake mustache and nose, and you can go make some bets at the South Point. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I got people. I, I <laughs> 
I have, I have no problem at all. I, I, uh, I hold no grudges. I, in fact, I strongly recommend the Sal Point to all my best customers to bet and bet big against them. And that is different than what you said earlier about some bookmakers where I believe you said the cockroach bookmakers, which is what makes Steve Fezzik Steve Fezzik, well, right? I'm, the cockroaches. I'm, well, you know, I'm, I'm completely... Like you can treat me like garbage, and if you deal, if you do everything right with your sports book or your casino, I mean, I'm still going to give you accolades. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, I call it as it is. There, there are guys I can't stand. Like I'll, I'll use an example. I, I, I can't stand Allen Boston, but I fully respect him. You know, in terms of his college basketball and his legacy, and he belongs in the sports betting Hall of Fame. I mean, I, I, I consider myself to be able to evaluate people like that. Let's do this. Let's j- dive into the Sweet 16. Second round goes to the Faves, 15-1 straight up, 11-5 ATS. The overs hit as well, 25-22-1. Just takeaways before we dive into the Sweet 16 here, Steve. I, I am shocked how the world has changed because as these favorites and all of them won but one on the weekend, and I'm like, oh, there's going to be repercussions. The books are going to have all these money line parlays and liabilities, and they're going to have to inflate these lines on the late games. And then what's this? Yale's about to play San Diego State, and it's not moving one penny. So you're going to have to ask me, like, the bookmakers, what is going on? Because, like, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, like, when Michigan State was playing George Mason, the line on that game, like, went from three to four to five to six, up, 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 and the public was moving lines. I know there's people that disagree with me. I think they're just wrong. This whole idea of fading the public and you're going to win and the public moving lines, it uh, it is... I don't think the public moves lines anymore. I think it's just the biggest betting groups in the world. If there's value, they're going to bomb away on something, and they're going to bring it right back into play. Look at Houston. The, they, they determined, the pros did, that Houston was the wrong side. And despite every favorite winning and covering and the number one seeds kicking butt, Houston free falls from 10 all the way down to 8.5. Well, you mentioned the Borgata. And the race and sports book director is a friend now, Thomas Gable. And I said, how to go over the weekend with all the favorites winning? He said, quote, Saturday was our best day of hold of all the four days, believe it or not. Yesterday was terrible. Big losses on Alabama, Purdue, and UConn. Not sure if anything matters to you from that quote from the race and sports book director, but that's what he said. Yeah, it's very hard to be a sports book director also because you can be balanced on all those games. Well, what happened? And it's like, even though you're balanced, you look at the parlay liability and all these three, four, five, six teamers, sucker bets kept getting home with uh, parlaying the Yukons of the world, etc. So um, then, you, you know, you, you, you throw a switch and say, hey, we were balanced on our straight bets, but the parlays, you know, got us. And I'm sure that's what happened to Thomas Gable. Dustin, you had a question for Steve. Yeah. With all the favorites winning. Yeah, so Saturday, favorites go crazy, undefeated, 8-0, straight up, and they're they're covering for the most part as well. So my question is with another slate of games coming up on Sunday, do you change anything about how you're looking at the numbers and the teams with the trend that all these favorites just keep covering? Because I can tell you as someone who kept betting dogs, it didn't work out too well. Well, I'm, I'm ready to fire getting better value on all the dogs when it materializes into, into soft numbers. Never materialized. Where the, where the heck is the plus seven on Yale where I, should, I, I, I would get my, my teeth kicked in? Sure. You know, where is the plus 10 on Texas A&M? It, none of this is, is moving the market one iota. So because of that, I'm not getting any extra value. Um, I don't care about a team. Now, the, one thing I will say for early on, there was a trend that first half unders were great in the tournament. And I think it was pretty clear early on that whatever had gone on with the ball being in, in a, a quarter of an inch in diameter different from normal, it wasn't occurring this year because this was a year of scoring, not just in the for the overall game, but early on in a lot of these games went skying over. And I think there was a, there was one prop in particular, highest scoring team, you know, will they get, you know, 97 points? And I think like five of them did. In fact, there was one game, of course, famously Florida game, you know, in Colorado, both teams scored over yeah. 98 points. Crazy. Yeah, overall scoring up across the tournament, no doubt. Let's talk about Thursday, uh, 631, Illinois. Contrast in style, Steve. All offense, Illinois. All defense, Iowa State. Iowa State opened a two-and-a-half-point favorite at DraftKings. It's now sitting Iowa State lane two. You know, I'm going to make a, a bold statement. Uh, you're not going to win on any of these games. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. 
how sharp your experts are. I don't care that they've got a documented great record. There's, um, we're, we're in the, the, uh, the Sweet 16. There's only eight games. These numbers are hammered into place. And, yeah, you might be able to spot a 52.5% bet um, and lay minus or 53% bet and lay minus 105 and get very slightly the better of it. This is not the time to be stepping up a big man, big game. I'm going to make my biggest bet of the year. This is, um, this is a time to go ahead and, and I would say pivot and start handicapping spring football and handicap the baseball season where there'll be lots of lines that are going to be off, but I don't think they're going to be off on any of these games. So personally, Patrick, I don't know if I'm going to get involved with any of them. I've already looked at all of them. And what was interesting is a couple of favorites did take steam early on in the process, and we'll talk about that. But um, I'll tell you if, if I lean to anything, but I got nothing on this game. Okay, just a little steam on Connecticut. They opened 10 and a half, 633. Of course, against San Diego State, it has been bet up to 11. If any team that I would imagine UConn continues to get bet, it's not going to go crazy, but you would think that one might get to 11 and a half here. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So little steam, 10 to 11. Um, it's, uh, think about minus when you're laying minus 11, lay a dollar 10, that's about the same as laying minus 10 minus 130. Okay. So I would say you're, you're basically, this isn't a little steam. This is like a, a tsunami of money on Connecticut, because if you like Connecticut, you could have had them and you could have been paying 10 cents in Vegas. Now you're paying 30 cents in Vegas, essentially to get back to that, you know, what the number was. You're not going to win being the last person in, in the bathroom when every other person and every other lemming that's following the sharp money on the minus 10 gets in there. So at this point, you have to fade Connecticut or pass. But you know what? My take is they're going to kill them. So... Again, I'm stuck. Uh, I got no action. <laughs> if you're in the bathroom with a bunch of betters, just make sure you watch your wash your hands. Alabama, North Carolina. That's the biggest total on the board, 635. Our buddy Will Hill was on. He's going to go under the 173 and a half with Bama and North Carolina. An opinion there? Wow. So I like the contrarian aspect. Um, but with so many games going over, I got to wonder... You know, standalone game. I think maybe you get a better number right at post. Um, you know, speaking of bathrooms, I, I have an Alan Boston story one time. I, I thought I heard a guy shouting in the bathroom, screaming, screaming in the bathroom. I'm like, that guy sounds just like Alan Boston. You know why it sounded like Alan Boston? It was Alan it was. Boston. Exactly. <laughs> it was, and he wasn't happy. Yeah, it sounds All like right, he so needs we to know. eat more fiber. Burberrygame.com, <laughs> <laughs> Fezzik Sports. Before we go, you said DraftKings put up their NFL season wins, and you've got to play for us. Sure, I'll go ahead and give two of them. Um, I didn't understand either one of these numbers. Maybe you guys can help me. So Miami and Philadelphia have to pay a little bit extra vig, under 10.5 for both of them. You know, it's interesting. I've heard nothing but, like, general negativity about both the organizations and their, their prospects, you know, to deliver a champion. And here they are getting lined at 10 and a half, right in line with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills and the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't think they belong at 10 and a half. I would have expected both teams to be more like 9 and a half. I like both of them under. Your thoughts, gentlemen? You said the Dolphins and whom? I'm sorry? Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles. Little juice on ten and a half to the under. Yes, like them both under. <laughs> I'm curious about the Eagles. I'm curious about the Eagles. Uh, in terms of the future market, there's a lot of numbers with them where they're being doubted next year, and maybe the numbers right. But they do feel like a potential bounce back. I have a lot of questions about Jalen Hurts, though. He's not. He's not an accurate passer. They need to scheme things up better.